Welcome to LaserWriter Pro Service Training. The LaserWriter Pro is a high quality 600 DPI PostScript laser printer. Although similar in functionality to other Apple laser printers, the LaserWriter Pro is unique in many ways. To accurately and efficiently service the LaserWriter Pro, you must quickly locate and know the function of each module and major part correctly and safely take apart and reassemble the printer and use printer diagnostics. These skills are demonstrated in this program. This tape is divided into four parts. Part 1, Parts and Functions Print Cycle Initiation and Part 2, Parts and Functions Print Cycle Completion locate and describe each component as it functions during the print cycle. Part 3, Take Apart and Reassembly demonstrates how to take apart and reassemble the LaserWriter Pro printer. And Part 4, Printer Diagnostics, demonstrates how to execute and interpret printer diagnostics. To help you locate a specific part of the tape, the part number is displayed in the upper right corner of the screen. The LaserWriter Pro contains many components which are similar in function to those found in other laser printers, as well as a few which are unique. Although functionally similar, their location and physical characteristics are, in most cases, different. This part of the tape identifies components generally in the sequence in which they function during the initiation phase of the print cycle. During the print cycle, a sheet of paper is picked up and moved through the printer following an S-shaped path to the paper delivery tray. To help you reference the location of a module or part, this orientation is used. This is the front of the printer, the right side, the back, the left side, the top, and the bottom. The LaserWriter Pro printer has two customer installed options. This is the 500 sheet feeder and base. It attaches to the printer below the standard feeder assembly and paper cassette. And this is the envelope feeder. It attaches to the printer above the multi-purpose tray. Both options are software controlled. We begin walking through the print cycle at the source of power. The on-off switch and the AC power connector are located at the bottom left side of the printer on the power supply. The power supply provides AC power to the fuser assembly and DC power to the DC controller board. Immediately after switching on the printer, the fan begins operation. The I.O. shield is located behind the back panel and secures the I.O. board to the printer. The I.O. board controls communication between the computer and external devices and prints the user test page. The I.O. board also contains the printer's ROM and RAM. The LaserWriter Pro is configured with one of two I.O. boards. The LaserWriter Pro 630 I.O. board connector panel contains the push-button configuration switch, a SCSI port, a local talk port, an RS-232C serial port, an Ethernet port, and a parallel port. The LaserWriter Pro 600 I.O. board does not have a SCSI port or an Ethernet port. The DC controller board is one of up to four controller boards, depending on which options are installed. As the interface between the I.O. board and the print engine, the DC controller board controls the printer, distributes DC power to the printer, and prints the service test page. The DC controller board also controls the pickup controller board, discussed later. Immediately after switching on the printer, the DC controller board determines if the ready states are present and, if present, executes the user test page. The main motor is located below the DC controller board. The main motor provides drive to the drive assembly. 
This space above the power supply is used to install an optional SCSI hard drive. This is the multi-purpose tray assembly. This tray holds up to 100 sheets of paper. Here is the service test print switch access. Use a non-metallic tool to depress this to generate a service test print. This is the envelope feeder cable which connects the envelope feeder's controller board to the pickup controller board. Below the multi-purpose tray assembly is the paper cassette which holds up to 250 sheets of paper. The top cover and remaining panels are removed to allow identification of the next assembly. Here is the paper pickup block which picks up paper and feeds it toward the toner cartridge. The pickup controller board is located on the back of the paper pickup block. This board controls the paper pickup block and the sheet feeder and envelope feeder controller boards when these options are installed. Here are the top cover interlock switch SW601 and switch actuator. When the top cover is open, the actuator opens the switch, cutting power. When closed, the cover interlock arm on the top cover depresses the actuator, closing the switch and restoring power. Here are the multipurpose paper present sensor PS702 and sensor arm. The sensor arm is activated by the leading edge of paper loaded in the multipurpose tray. This is the multipurpose pickup roller. This roller picks up paper from the multipurpose tray when it is selected as the source of paper. Here are the multipurpose paper end sensor, PS701, and sensor arm. The sensor arm is activated by the trailing edge of paper leaving the multipurpose tray, indicating the paper's length. The multipurpose paper present and paper end sensors are located on the pickup sensor board. The multipurpose pickup roller is controlled by the multipurpose pickup solenoid located at the top front of the paper pickup block. The pickup block motor is located on the bottom front of the paper pickup block. This motor provides drive to the paper pickup block. Here are the cassette paper sensor PS601 and sensor arm. The sensor arm is activated when paper is loaded in the paper cassette. This is the cassette pickup roller. This roller feeds paper from the paper cassette when it is selected as the source of paper. Here are the upper cassette size sensing switches SW603, 604, and 605. Activated by cams on the side of the paper cassette, these switches determine the size of the paper cassette. The cassette pickup roller is controlled by the cassette pickup solenoid, located at the bottom front of the paper pickup block. Here are the registration paper sensor PS602 and sensor arm. When activated, Paper is held here until it's synchronized with the photosensitive drum. If the paper does not clear the sensor within the prescribed time, a pickup unit delay jam exists and the controller stops printing. This completes initiation of the print cycle and part one of the tape. Please stop the tape. In part two, we complete review of the LaserWriter Pro print cycle. 
The laser scanner assembly and the toner cartridge are located below the top cover, which is already removed. The laser scanner assembly generates and scans a laser beam onto the photosensitive drum in the toner cartridge. The laser scanner assembly is replaced as a single module. The toner cartridge contains toner, the photosensitive drum, primary roller, developing cylinder, and the drum cleaning unit. This is the drive assembly. This assembly transfers drive from the main motor to the toner cartridge. The toner cartridge drives the transfer roller, located below the toner cartridge. The transfer roller puts a high voltage charge on the paper as it passes between the photosensitive drum and the roller. The charge causes the toner image on the photosensitive drum to transfer to the paper. The high voltage power supply is located on the bottom of the printer. The high voltage power supply provides high voltage to the toner cartridge and to the transfer roller through the transfer block assembly. The transfer block assembly is located above the high voltage power supply. This is the high voltage connector block. It connects the power supply to the high voltage power supply and the fuser assembly. Here is the sheet feeder cable, which connects the sheet feeder's controller board to the pickup controller board. The fuser assembly is accessible through the fuser access door, which is already removed. The fuser assembly applies pressure and heat, causing the toner image to fuse to the page. The fuser assembly contains the upper and lower fuser pressure rollers the heater bulb located in the upper roller, the thermosensor which communicates temperature to the DC controller board, and the thermoprotector fuse which cuts off power to the fuser assembly when excessive voltage is drawn by the heater bulb. The fuser roller gears are driven by the drive assembly. This is the delivery roller assembly. The delivery roller assembly moves the page from the fuser assembly following a C-shaped path to the paper delivery tray on top of the printer. The assembly contains three gears and a gear drive belt which are driven by the fuser assembly. Here are the delivery interlock sensor PS201 and sensor arms, the last parts to be identified. This sensor performs two functions. First, the lower sensor arm when activated by the sensing lever housed in the fuser assembly, establishes that the printed page has cleared the fuser assembly. If the sensor arm is not activated within the prescribed amount of time, a delivery unit paper jam is determined to exist. Second, the upper sensor arm, when activated by opening the fuser access door, cuts off power. When the fuser access door is closed, the plastic tab on the door depresses the sensor arm, restoring power. This completes review of the print cycle and part two of the tape. Please stop the tape. This part of the tape demonstrates how to take apart and reassemble the LaserWriter Pro printer. Modules and major parts are removed and replaced in the sequence in which they are presented in the LaserWriter Pro Take Apart chapter on Apple Service Source. For demonstration purposes, some screws and connectors are already removed. Follow these guidelines when taking apart and reassembling the printer. Switch off the printer and disconnect the power cord. Be sure to use an ESD safe work area and follow ESD precautions. In this demonstration, the printer frame is connected to ground. And carefully follow the procedures, cautions, and tips presented on Apple Service Source.
Begin taking apart the printer by removing the toner cartridge and the paper cassette. Start removing the rear panel by opening the toner access cover and removing the cover liner screw. Grip the upper corner of the rear panel with your left hand and squeeze so that the rear panel shifts about one eighth inch. This dislodges the two positioning pins on the I.O. label or right end of the rear panel. While maintaining your grip with your left hand, Place your right fingertips on the I.O. label end of the rear panel. Then swing the rear panel outward using a motion that pivots around your left hand and remove the rear panel from the printer. Begin removing the top cover by opening the fuser access door. Remove the two screws inside the door. Using a flat blade screwdriver, release the four flex tabs and separate the liner from the printer. Then remove the cover and liner from the printer. Do not take apart the top cover hinges. Finally, remove the power inlet cover from the printer. Begin removing the cassette stop cover by gently bowing it outward slightly until it releases from the printer. Now, remove the front panel by grasping the panel with your fingertips and pulling it outward slightly to release the upper fixed tab on the right side. Reach behind the front panel and release the flex tab that secures the front panel to the chassis. Then grip the bottom left and bottom right corners with your fingertips. Release tabs three and four and swing the front panel downward. Disconnect the cable from the status panel connector and remove the front panel from the printer. Start removing the I.O. shield by removing these six screws. Slide out the I.O. shield cover plate and swing the I.O. shield downward as far as it will go. Disconnect the engine interface cable from the I.O. board. Then disconnect the power supply cable from connector J15 on the I.O. board and remove the I.O. shield and board from the printer. Be sure to place the board on an ESD mat. Remove the right corner panel by first removing the two screws that secure the right corner panel to the chassis. Reach into the access hole and release the hidden flex tab. Then remove the panel from the printer. Begin removal by bending the edge guide outward and releasing the left pin and then the right pin. Tilt the tray up into its normal closed position. Grasp the sides of the cover and bend the center with your thumbs until the cover pops loose from its pin hinges and remove the multi-purpose tray cover from the printer. Remove these two screws and lift off the lateral brace.
open the multipurpose tray until it angles downward and slide the tray off the holding pins. Now, remove the multipurpose closure panel by first grasping the squared notch at the top of the panel between your thumb and forefinger. Then press down slightly and lift out the panel. Start removal of the fuser access door by squeezing the fish hook end of the strap hinge using needle nose pliers and removing it from its mount. Grasp the sides of the door and bend the center with your thumbs until the door pops loose from its pin hinges. And remove it from the printer. Remove the fuser assembly by first removing the two hex-shaped screws. Raise the fuser slightly to clear the two positioning nibs. Press down on the green jam release arm and pull out the fuser. There is a receptacle left of center on the rear face of the fuser assembly. It mates with the high voltage connector block and may cause slight resistance when you're pulling out the fuser. Begin removing the delivery roller assembly by disconnecting the ground plate from the chassis. With your left hand, press upward on the lower roller shaft. Using a small flat blade screwdriver, press in on the left gripper tab and then the right and disengage the assembly from the chassis. Place your right hand opposite your left and pull the assembly from the printer using a rolling motion. Begin removing the laser scanner assembly by removing the four cables from the cable clips. and disconnecting the cables at their connectors. Remove the four screws which secure the assembly to the top chassis. Then lift the laser scanner assembly from the printer. Begin removing the transfer roller by hooking the gear end of the roller with the hook end of the cleaning brush stored on the cover liner. Snap the left side of the roller from the printer. Grasping the gear end of the roller Remove the right side of the transfer roller from the printer. Remove the DC controller board by first detaching connector J103 from the power supply. Remove all cables except for the engine interface cable and power supply cable. Release the two flex tabs and pull the board out of the printer. Start removing the power supply by removing the three screws that secure the power supply to the rear chassis. Detach connector J104. Connector J103 should already be removed. Then pull out the power supply and remove it from the printer. There is a receptacle on the rear face of the power supply. It mates with the high voltage connector block and may cause slight resistance when you're pulling out the power supply.
Remove the main motor by first removing the four screws which secure it to the rear chassis. Connector J131 should already be disconnected from the DC controller board. Then pull out the main motor from the printer. Start removing the drive assembly by removing the two screws that secure the drive assembly to the rear chassis. Grip the edge of the assembly housing with needle nose pliers and pull it about a quarter of an inch from the chassis wall. Then slide the drive assembly out the fuser side of the printer. Begin removing the high voltage power supply by turning over the printer. Remove the two screws that secure the high voltage power supply to the bottom chassis. Release the two flex tabs. And pull the high voltage power supply out of the printer. There are three hidden contacts and a pin connector that may cause slight resistance when performing this procedure. Remove the paper pickup block by first removing the three brass colored screws on the front chassis. The numbers 1, 2, and 3 are etched into the chassis at these screw locations. Remove the two screws that secure the right edge of the paper pickup block to the chassis. Disconnect the two cables from the exposed edge of the pickup controller board. Grasp the paper pickup block and slide it out of the printer. This completes take apart of the LaserWriter Pro printer. Reassemble the LaserWriter Pro by reversing the take apart procedures. Replace the paper pickup block by first positioning the block and sliding it into the printer. Connect the two cables on the exposed edge of the pickup controller board. Replace the two screws that secure the right edge of the paper pickup block to the chassis. Then replace the three brass colored screws on the front chassis next to the numbers 1, 2, and 3 and in that order. Begin replacing the high voltage power supply by turning the printer over on its side. Position the high voltage power supply and seat the two flex tabs. The three contacts and pin connector may cause slight resistance. Then replace the two screws that secure the high voltage power supply to the bottom chassis. Begin replacing the drive assembly by gripping the edge of the assembly housing with needle nose pliers and sliding it into the left side of the printer, largest gear first. Then replace the two screws that secure the drive assembly to the rear chassis. Start replacing the main motor by positioning it in the printer. Then replace the four screws which secure the main motor to the rear chassis. Begin replacing the power supply by positioning it in the printer. The receptacle on the rear face of the power supply mates with the high voltage connector block and may cause slight resistance. 
Reattach connector J104. Then replace the three screws that secure the power supply to the rear chassis. Start replacing the DC controller board by positioning the bottom edge of the board into the two mounts and snapping the top into place. Make sure that the positioning posts line up with the holes in the board. Attach connector J103 to the power supply and track the cable. Then connect and track the remaining cables to the DC controller board. The cable connectors are designed to attach only to the correct board connector. Start replacing the transfer roller by positioning the right end of the roller into its holder. Then snap the gear end of the roller into its holder. Begin replacing the laser scanner assembly by positioning the assembly on the printer chassis. Make sure that the shutter and the shutter lever are reinstalled in this position. Replace the four screws that secure the laser scanner assembly to the top chassis. Replace the four cables in the cable clips. And attach the three cables to their connectors. Start replacing the delivery roller assembly by grasping the assembly with both hands and positioning it in the printer using a rolling motion. Position the two gripper tabs. Press downward on the assembly. Then connect the ground plate to the chassis. Begin replacing the fuser assembly by positioning the assembly on the two positioning nibs. The receptacle on the rear of the fuser assembly mates with the high voltage connector block and may cause slight resistance. Then replace the two hex shaped screws. Begin replacing the fuser access door by grasping the sides of the door and snapping it into its pin hinges. Then snap the fish hook end of the strap hinge into the mount. Start replacing the multipurpose closure panel by sliding the panel into the printer. Then snap it into place. Now position the multipurpose tray onto the holding pins. Position the lateral brace and replace the two screws that secure the brace to the chassis. Grasp the cover with both hands, bend it slightly, and snap it onto its pin hinges. Then snap the multipurpose tray holding pins into the cover.
Start replacing the right corner panel by positioning the panel on the printer. Connect the hidden flex tab. Then replace the two screws that secure the right corner panel to the chassis. Begin replacing the I.O. shield by attaching the power supply cable to connector J15 on the I.O. board. Position the I.O. shield with the grounds resting on top of the chassis flange. Connect the engine interface cable to the I.O. board. Position the I.O. shield and install the I.O. shield cover plate. Then replace the six screws which secure the I.O. shield to the rear chassis. Begin replacing the front panel by positioning the panel and connecting the cable to the status panel connector. Seat the three hooks into the chassis base and tilt the front panel up and into position. Engage tab 2 by gently striking the upper left corner of the front panel with the base of your palm. Connect the three remaining tabs. Then replace the cassette stop cover. Start replacing the top cover by positioning the power inlet cover. Position the cover liner, making sure that all seven tabs engage fully. With the top cover folded open, engage the two hooks into the liner and lower the top cover until it's nearly flush with the delivery roller assembly. Reach through and gently press the delivery surface until the positioning tab pops into place. Then replace the two screws inside the fuser access door. Begin replacing the rear panel by positioning the three hooks on the rear panel into the openings in the right corner panel. Swing the rear panel closed, being sure to slide the tab beneath the cover liner. Replace the cover liner screw, the toner cartridge and the paper cassette and close the toner access door. This completes Laser Rider Pro reassembly and part three of the tape. Please stop the tape. The Laser Rider Pro provides diagnostic information through the printer's LEDs when the RS-232 connector is installed. Printer diagnostics are divided into two tests. Test 1 checks the I.O. board and test 2 checks the print engine. To invoke diagnostics, switch off the printer. Install the RS-232 connector in the serial port and switch on the printer. Test 1 takes approximately 20 seconds. The LEDs flash on and off during the test. If the test fails, an error pattern displays. If test 1 passes, the unknown engine error pattern, shown here, displays 
and Test 2 executes. Upon completion of Test 2, the unknown engine error pattern is replaced by another LED pattern if a faulty module is identified or if no error is found. If an error exists, but the diagnostics are unable to identify the source of the error, the unknown engine error pattern will continue to display. This LED pattern indicates that the laser scanner assembly is faulty. Carefully watch the printer's LEDs as the diagnostics are executed again. This time, the diagnostics have identified a faulty fan, as this error pattern indicates. Use printer diagnostics as your first troubleshooting resource, and carefully follow the procedures presented on Apple Service Source. This concludes Part 4, Printer Diagnostics, and the LaserWriter Pro Service Training videotape. Please stop and rewind the tape.